Hey guys, what's up? It's Matt here. And in this video, I want to share five tips on how you can gain more confidence to jam with other musicians. So if you've been playing guitar for a while now, um, you've got some tunes under your fingers, maybe you know some friends and family that uh, play music, maybe there's some gatherings and you want to be able to take part in those jam sessions and contribute more, but maybe you're feeling like you're not able to keep up I want to share with you some tips that can help you get more confidence and to have more fun jamming in your next jam session. So a quick little story. When I started playing, I was only about 18 years old. I didn't start when I was a kid, but the thing is, when I started playing at 18, most of my experience for the first year and a half came through just jamming with random musicians. Um, I was self-taught for the first year and a half before I started taking lessons. And I learned so much in my musical journey and my experience just by interacting with other musicians. So I want to share with you some of my insights to help you along with your journey so you can jam with other people more confidently. So the first tip that I would say that I, that I learned was to help me jam with other musicians is definitely learning you know, tunes and thinking about songs that you can play. And when I first got started playing at about age 18, I was playing the bass guitar is what I started on and I was learning cover songs and I was playing along with records. And what that did by playing along with actual records was it was like training me to get my ear together and my hands together and my timing together and kind of have like a simulated experience of what it was like to play with other musicians um, when I played along with the recording. So in the beginning, you know, I was trying to kind of map out the notes and I'd make mistakes, but each time I play with the recording, I'd make adjustments and get better until I could play the song from beginning to end. And ultimately, being able to do that allowed me to jam with other musicians uh, for the first time. Uh, for example, the first time I played with a drummer, I'd never played with a drummer before, but by playing with actual recordings, playing with the songs from front to back, when I actually played with a real drummer, I had a sense of the feel and the timing. And that was really huge. So the thing is, you want to think about tunes that you know, or tunes that you can learn, um, that you could play with other people. If you only know little parts of songs, maybe think about how you can learn the whole song, but keep the songs really simple. Because what I found in jam sessions is, the more complicated the song is, the harder it is for everybody to put the music together. So simple tunes are really good for jam sessions. Like for example, uh, Cortez the Killer, uh, by Neil Young is a great jam session tune because it's like three chords. It's E minor seven, D, A minor. And then it just repeats. So like a, it's three chords, four bars that repeats over and over again. That's a great jam session tune. Uh, maybe another one would be, um, you know, like uh, Can't You See by Marshall Tucker Band, which is like three chords, D, kind of like a D over C, and then to a G, kind of chord thing. basically just keeps repeating. Um, even a tune like Free Bird uh, by Leonard Skinner, G, D over F sharp, E minor, and then F, C, and D, basically repeats. Um, so simple chord progression, uh, something like a Hey Joe by Hendrix, right? So like C, G, D, A, and E. So basically those chords just keep repeating throughout the tune. So simple tunes like that are good for jam sessions. Um, you don't want to do tunes that are too complicated. So once you have some tunes picked out, this brings me to the second point is the idea of just like planning ahead for the jam session. Even if you don't want to have one scheduled or coming up that you know of, you never know when one's going to pop up. So when you practice, I generally think about practicing in a way that I'll be playing with other people. 
And when you practice, you want to plan a way to plan ahead for that jam session that's coming up, even if you don't know when it is, so that when it does come up, that you'll be able to take part in it and feel confident with the skills that you have. So the idea is how do you plan and prepare? Well, one is you, you have a handful of tunes, I would say five to 10 tunes that you know that you can jam on with other people and practicing those songs versus bouncing from you know, thing to thing in your guitar playing. You really wanna know five or 10 songs really well. Know the chords, maybe be able to take a solo over those, uh, those chord changes and um, play along with the records, play along with drum tracks and things like that. So when you actually have the jam session, like people are gonna say, well, what do you wanna play? You have some tunes that you have available and you've practiced them. So you're gonna be like, yeah, I know these songs pretty good and I know that these are gonna work. So you definitely wanna be thinking ahead about what songs can I be practicing in my regular guitar playing that I will be able to jam with other musicians so that when that opportunity comes, you're like good to go. The third thing that um, I can recommend to give you more confidence to be able to jam with other musicians is that um, not to be afraid to put yourself in that situation. And we all get kind of you know afraid of being in a new situation because it's the fear of the unknown. What's gonna happen? What if I mess up? Um, what if somebody says, hey, you're terrible and like get out of here or something like that? which is probably not gonna happen. But um, it's the idea of just getting over that fear and just putting ourselves into these situations, you know, with, with friends or family or people that we know, because really that's the best way that we can learn. So how do we gain confidence to jam with other musicians? It's we gain more experience to play with other musicians. And that's how we learn what to expect and how to prepare. So when we get in those situations, it gets easier and more fun as we go. So this was something that when I first got into playing and jamming with other musicians, I was really just kind of putting myself out there. Anybody that I met, I'd be like, oh, you play drums or you play guitar or you play whatever, let's jam and let's see what we can put together musically. And I just learned so much by interacting with people before I'd even really taken any lessons. I didn't really know what any of the notes were or any of the stuff on the fretboard. I was just kind of filling in little bits and pieces and using my skills from playing with recordings and picking up things through, through interaction with other people. And what I found was most people are pretty cool. Like most people are like, hey, you're just starting out or um, it's okay if you don't know. Really the goal is that we're making music, not to make each other feel bad or anything like that. So really the key is um, just putting yourself in situations where you can jam with other people or just learning from the experience because the things that you will learn will give you more confidence and shape your practicing so that the next time you have a jam session will be even better and the next time and the next time it just keeps getting better and better. The fourth thing to give you confidence to jam with other musicians is the idea of like knowing your instrument in more detail. Now I had been playing bass for about eight months or so uh, before I started really playing with musicians who were into creating their own music and improvising. And I didn't know really anything about that at that time. I, I was like, well, what do you mean just jam? I mean, what does that mean? I didn't really know the notes on the fretboard or anything like that, but they were really cool guys and they encouraged me to just go for it. They said, hey, you've got, you know, you know the notes, you've got good feel, um, you know, just kind of make it up. And I just kind of went for it and used my ear and my intuition and things actually started progressing. However, when I asked them, hey, what else can I do? I'm not sure where else I can go. They really didn't have any answers for me. So at that point, that's when I started to kind of pursue learning how music worked by taking lessons and studying with people. And really I was interested in learning how the music worked, not necessarily learning songs from teachers and things like that. And so when you wanna jam with other people, particularly if you want to be creative and know how to improvise, um, understanding like the notes on your fretboard, maybe what chords are in particular keys. So if somebody's playing a song, you can identify the key and you'll know how to match chords with that. Or if you need to take a solo, you'll know where to play your scale so you can take a solo and things like that. So knowing your theory and investigating in, in, in that area is, is really important to jam and be creative and improvise. And the way to practice that is a great website called musictheory.net. You can kind of learn your music theory there and uh, there's some great exercises and tutorials about keys and where your the notes are on your fretboard. And the other thing about the theory is, wherever you are in the stage of your theory knowledge, 
Um, what I would recommend that's helped me out the most is the more I learned about theory is the more that I applied it to music in two ways. Um, one, either I'd write a piece of music um, with that theory knowledge. So when I first started taking guitar lessons, one of my first guitar teachers taught me the chords in keys. And I had no idea what that was, but that opened up a whole possibility of things to me. So what I did was I started taking those chords and started writing uh, chord progressions or even little songs using those chords so I could understand how they worked better and get familiar with them with my, with my ear. So enhancing your music theory can be done by being creative and writing your own music um, or applying it to uh, songs. So for example, like um, when I was first trying to learn jazz, um, I had all this theory knowledge, but I didn't really um, know how to play jazz. And the problem was because I didn't know any jazz tunes. I didn't know any jazz standards. And so once I learned some jazz standards and I said, okay, now I need to apply the theory, the chords and the scales so that I can enhance my improvisation um, within the tune. So the idea is taking a tune that you already know and applying your theory to it. What key is it in? Uh, what scale can I use to solo? Do I have to change keys or change scales for the chord progression um, to solo if it changes keys? Uh, what notes are in the chords? Things like that. So the more you ask those questions of yourself and really apply the theory to the songs, then I think it'll help you become a much better and more confident improviser when you go to jam with other musicians. Okay, so the last thing that can give you more confidence to jam with other musicians is really just going out and taking the action to go set up a jam session or just attend a jam session and just start doing something. Um, because if we just kind of stay in our rooms and just play um, and just hope that something's going to come up, maybe something will, you know, you never know, but sometimes we have to go out and we have to take the action if it's something that we really want. So. There's plenty of jam sessions in every town. You can look them up online, Facebook groups, Craigslist, uh, maybe your nearby restaurant or, or, or bar or something like that. There's an open mic or jam session and you can just go and check it out. You'll learn a lot from the experience or maybe just call up that friend that you know that plays or those family members and say, hey, I wanna get together and do a jam session and I've been working on these tunes and I wanna see if we can play them together. And um, you know, it's something I really wanna do and would you be able to help me out? And a lot of times people will be very kind and say, yeah, for sure, who wouldn't wanna do that? Sounds like fun. Um, but the key is really taking action because if we don't, then we always kinda of stay stuck in the same place and um, you know, we're never gonna have that fun experience of, of jamming with other musicians or gaining the confidence so that we can have fun jamming with other musicians. So the key is take action, find a venue to go to a jam session to check it out, sign up, call a friend, call a family member, do something to put something on the calendar and then start getting ready for it and you'll start building your skills to be more confident to jam with other musicians. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, again, my name is Matt Friedland and I help guitar players develop the skills so that they can confidently jam with any musician. If you wanna learn more about how to uh, jam with other musicians confidently. I have a free guide that you can click in the link below where you can download it for free. It's going to give you a whole blueprint of how to structure your time and how to plan for jam sessions so you can jump in on your next jam session, be confident, and have a great time jamming out with your friends, your family, or even go to a venue, open mic, club, or something like that. So guys, appreciate you watching the video. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, leave them in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye.